The sixth Rwanda Demographic and Health Survey shows that 14% of women that have requested for birth control prescriptions don't get them, especially teenagers who are denied these services due to the law that prohibits this. Some people are now requesting for this law to change. To me, I wish as a country and our culture should permit the teenagers to use birth control methods. There are options of contraceptive pills and injections. It would be nice if they were easily accessed. A cross-section of citizens are consistently putting pressure on various institutions to change this law, hindering the youth from accessing birth control services. The main reason for this advocacy is the issue of unwanted pregnancies among young girls, which is 30,000 per year. The Rwanda representative of the United Nations Population Fund, Mark Brian Strainer, says this issue requires intervention of various institutions. Addressing teenage pregnancy is not a health issue alone. The Health and the Ministry of Health has an important role, but there's a role for the Ministry of Education to make sure that comprehensive sexuality education is available. There's a role for the Ministry of Justice to make sure we have a supportive legal environment and policy framework. There's a role for local government to be working with communities and with traditional leaders and faith-based organizations. There's a role for the Ministry of Youth to make sure young people are leading and participating in the discussion. The Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Gamije, says debates on this issue are necessary due to the country's vision. We wish to get to the bottom of this issue and find a solution for it, because in the plans we want to include in NST1, a 16-year-old should be permitted to work in case they were not able to finish school or join technical schools. Some of them live alone and might undergo many challenges, especially the girls. She could get raped while her parents live at the countryside, and this is why we need to see to this issue. On one hand, while the young girls are still denied these services, the number of those that are legally permitted is increasing as observed from 2015 to 2020. The rate has risen from 47.5% to 58%, meaning they have increased by 10.5%. The chief advisor for the Director General of the World Health Organization, Professor Sinat Fiseha, says the World Health Organization is confident that Rwanda will achieve the SDG goals. And today what we saw was for each commitment that was made, what would it take to operationalize it? So we were able to see the actual plans um, that, you know, and, and the, the work stream that needs to happen, including the workforce that needs to be trained, the um, advocacy work, the change in the legal framework, the policy environment, um, as well as the service delivery and the resources needed to deliver on this action plan. So when you have, you know, such a clearly delineated action Action plan, uh, it makes it a lot more easier to operationalize. So uh, the fact that this is being done, um, and frankly, less than a year, uh, the, the ICPD meeting was last February in Kenya. So we are now seeing a very clear action plan, and that is leaving me with a lot of optimism and hope about what is possible. In particular, the conference highlighted Rwanda's progress in fulfilling its previous pledges at the 1994 International Conference on Health in Cairo, a pledge that is largely based on reproductive health services. Jane Mutoni, reporting for RTV.